Use the poor pig or like a butter knife, you can loose them. So, okay, and loose them and loose among the you want, and then you pull the tea will become a, a loose. I can show you how to I pull. Uh, because it's a raw tea, you don't need to pull too long. So, you can see if I put the tea here, water, right? I only pull 8 to 25 seconds, and this tea is ready. Wow, really? Yeah. And that's why you can reuse the tea. Yeah. Because they're, you don't. Yeah. So this one, normally in my house, I can brew 12 times, no problem. Then I tell customer 10 times because there's, uh, have a certain quality there. And yeah, uh, yeah you can see it. You can try this one again. This is the second brew. You can do 10 times at the, at the least. 10 times. And then what if I wanted, I didn't want 10 cups today. I wanted like three cups today. And then can I keep it for tomorrow? Do I just lay it out to dry it? Or how you do can, I? You uh, can keep this one, like uh, you can put in the refrigerator. Oh, in the oh really? Overnight. Okay. okay. Yeah, overnight. It doesn't remember when you go to sleep, they go sleep in the refrigerator. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you go sleep together. <laughs> And this is poor tea. Yeah, poor. We are we are hundred percent here is poor. Poor is a very good tea. Yeah, if you drink poor, you will know your body feel light. Right. Yeah, and it make you happy too. <laughs> well, it made me happy. Yeah. Interesting. So it's not baked. Yeah. yeah not so it's essentially good. fermented tea. Yeah. I mean, the black poor goes through the compost process. So they make a little bit of uh, speed up to turn dark faster and also it uh, reduces the bitterness, reduces the caffeine at the same time. Yeah, we are. Green is uh, just slowly, slowly by the oxygen, take a time. So they take uh, 20 years to turn dark. Interesting. This is all poor tea container. Because uh, they need the air, so anything you don't want to uh, share time. Yeah. So it's opening. This is Yixing Clay. It's a yeah. good, very good storage uh, pool. Ah, beautiful. Baker Creek Seeds. Baker Creek Seeds. Yeah. He's famous in the catalog for those of you familiar. <laughs> yeah, she overrates me, of course. <laughs> and we were talking about watermelon varieties that you got we to were. taste. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we we help with the grow out of all the melons. Mm -hmm. Probably our one of our favorite this year was the uh, Alibaba, which is one of our best selling melon. But also the Charleston Gray. And they had a spin-off of that of the Charleston Gray Elite, and that was a really good melon. Uh, we also had some, some other good ones. The Yellow Namba was a new one. That was a very good melon. Um, and then oh, we, we had some really good uh, moon and stars. They're good for the uh, design uh, on the outside. And uh, so... We munched on a lot of good melons Fun. this year. Oh, <laughs> so also the squash was really good, a lot of different squash. So it Did was you a, have a it was a good winter year. squash. Well, probably the red uh, curry was probably mm. my favorite. And it's pretty hard to beat that. It, it, it's hard, it's hard to beat a, a, a actually a butternut, mm -hmm. but uh, 
Oh, there's some other other good ones. Um, uh, I, I'm just not quite as up on on some of them. I I haven't uh, had access to. We didn't cook them this year. Well, wonderful. Anyway, thank you for hey. sharing your knowledge with us. Yeah, and thanks and thanks again for um, maybe trying some of these varieties, and I think you'll like them. I will. For yeah. Certain. Thank you. Yeah. See you later. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>
realized that there was such a need for deep investigations to uncover the connections that are going on behind the scenes that have been hidden from the public. Yeah, um, so, so you, you want us to say just a word about our background? Yeah, okay. So um, um, uh, I've, been, I've started doing public interest work almost 30 years ago in 1987. And for 14 years, I ran something called the Congressional Accountability Project, which opposed corruption in Congress. And it was there that I learned a lot about how to do investigative work, because I, I had the opportunity to work with some of the best investigative reporters in our nation and in our world, who taught me some things. Um, and then did a couple other things. Ran an, organi ran an organization against the commercialization of every nook and crank of our lives and culture with Ralph Nader for eight years. And, a few other things too. Um, yeah, so that's a little about me. <laughs> Mrs. W and I had a wonderful time at the Heirloom Festival. Last night, um, Vanny Harry wrapped up with a panel and it was uh, the, the couple, there's, there's three members that make up US Right to Know, which is a consumer advocacy group for honesty in journalism. And they had a panel discussion and it was very insightful. Toward the end of the, um, the talk, there was a guy in the audience who is a outspoken um, critic of the work that these people are doing. Now these people are not asking for anything specific. They're just asking for honesty and transparency in the market, in advertising, in policy. Um, and it was really interesting to see maybe 30 people gather around this guy. He was mic'd. He had a pen that had um, a, a microphone, even though um, he had been asked by several people if he was recording. He denied it and said no, he was not recording. And one of the guys astutely watched him turn off his um, pen mic. So they demanded that. Um, they demanded that he, he sign a release. He didn't have a release for the information that he was recording. It was really intense. It was really interesting to see people that are out there fighting every step of the way for consumers, for um, this information to be public information and yet people are being paid by industry and from the inside constantly trying to undermine and it's so prevalent in journalism and it's so prevalent in the media today. Um, there are very few journalists that are doing their due diligence. So when it comes to your food and it comes to food safety and it comes to a lot of these chemicals that we um, put on our bodies on a daily basis in our creams, our lotions, our shampoos, our toothpaste, our lipstick. Um, it's really important that you learn to use sites like EWG.org and you do your own homework because most of these chemicals approved for use in cosmetics um, are not, they're not tested. They're completely unknowns and, and many of them are actually known carcinogens lead in lipstick, formaldehyde in baby products. Did you get a key? Yay. So <laughs> I we left the fob in the in the room so Mrs. W went and got us <laughs> She went and got us another key. Save the day. Because we can't drive without the fob. Which is a whole nother story. So we're on our way to the pharmacy for breakfast. And then home. I'm super excited to recap what was one of your favorite things about the the expo. You know, just listening to all these experts and learning like what we can do next and what we can implement. Mm -hmm. A lot of things we won't implement, but mm -hmm. that it's possible. Mm -hmm. And kind of it was power invoking. Yeah. Yeah, it's very um the issues I think of toxicity and GMOs and um industrialized food is pretty dark. But I thought the, the really wonderful thing is each of these people have dedicated their life to whatever um, part of the fight that they have chosen, mm -hmm. but they have solutions. Very tangible, tactile right. things you can do every day um, to make it better. And I think that's, it's hard to take such a dark subject and feel empowered after listening right. to it. And I think they did, they all did a really great job. <laughs>
Look at this beautiful lady and her cheese. What'd you get? Oh, I got a little Parmesan, a little bread. We need a new cheese slicer. So I got right. one of those. A little blue and a little spread. Ooh. Oh, you got the spread? I did. Ooh, so good. I didn't get crackers though. Should I go get some crackers? I got crackers. We're a team. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we need chocolates. We have a little bit of chocolate. We have the Theo, if you like that. We need chocolates. Oh, that chocolate. <laughs> Let me show you the way. Look what this guy's doing. This is, these are it's got like pieces the best. of art. Oh uh, yeah. He's got the best job in the world. Unless he doesn't like chocolate. <laughs> so she's allergic to sugar. <laughs> I've got a pumpkin spice joke for somebody. Apple ginger shrub. Mm -hmm. 